Today, I am so thrilled to have joining us the funny, the talented five-time Grammy and Emmy nominee, comedian and actress, Margaret Cho. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great, how are you? Doing wonderful, thank you. So you are in town kicking off your three-day comedy show in Fort Wayne at the Summit City Comedy Club tonight through Saturday. So that's really exciting. So tell us about your tour and what people can expect from your show. It's just exciting to be able to go back and do comedy live again. You know, um, I think like a lot of live performers, especially comedians are just so excited to be out and like doing shows like with an audience, with mm -hmm. um, people there that are like, you know, just so excited to go out. So. It's really a celebration of that, you know, talking about it's just everything going on, but also how grateful we are to be back out and mm -hmm. doing shows. Absolutely. We are back outside, as we like to say, and it is re really exciting to see faces because that had to be hard <laughs> not being able to have that interaction over the years. Yes, it's very strange, you know, that um, we had just a couple of years where nobody could really do anything, especially live performance. And so... You know, for us who have been doing it for, I've been being um, like a live comedian performing for over 30 years. So to not have that, yeah, it's been really surreal. So it's really exciting to be able to go out again and do shows. Yes. And, you know, your work over the years is so extensive and it's been a mix of comedy and acting and music and advocacy. And I know that social issues and politics and race issues are super important to you. So my question is, how do you balance when you do your shows between the funny and deciding to address the bold topics? Well, it's all really about being funny. I mean, I think it's like important to talk about things that you're passionate about. But mm -hmm. for me also, it's also important to be a comedian. So <laughs> it's like you don't want to get too serious and, and bogged down um, by things you also want to be able to laugh. And so that's what I've always focused on. Yes, making sure that the audience is laughing and having a good time. And how do you feel now with things changing so much just in the world of being a comedian and with the recent attacks and just like trying to gauge your safety on the stage? Well, I just don't want to get like um, attacked. <laughs> right. Also, like, I just think like, I'm like really, um, I mean, I don't know. Like, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm really like about like, oh, let's just have the freedom to say what we want to say. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, you know, it, it can be kind of treacherous, but I'm just hope for the best. You, can, you, you never know. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, for sure, a safe place you can always talk about what's on your mind is on your podcast. And I know that you have your Margaret Cho podcast and you get intimate in conversation with friends and famous folks that you've known throughout the years. And I find something interesting. Your podcast started in 2019 and that was before the big wave of all the podcasts that came in in 2020. So what sparked your interest in starting a podcast? Well, I think it's just a really great way to communicate. I listen to a lot of them. I'm also a guest on a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, I was really excited last week to be a guest on Meghan Markle's podcast, which is, like, oh, really incredible. Yes. So, you know, for me, like, I think it's just a really exciting avenue to work in and to do stuff on. Um, so right now I'm on a little break from that and doing more stand-up comedy and mm -hmm. touring. Um so that's really welcome. But yeah, I do love, I just love to listen to podcasts. I love to be on them. It's really great. Yeah. So who has been your favorite guest so far? Um, I love um, just talking to, Ed, I mean, everyone. I love having Quentin Tarantino on, mm -hmm. which um, for me, he um, is somebody that I've known for really such a long time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have a shared love of film. And so and of course, he's a, a cinema icon. Yeah. So it's great to get get to talk to him. Very like interesting, like the the minutia of filmmaking. And that's something that I've always really treasured. And I also love uh, his podcast. So it's it's really fun to embrace this kind of new um, avenue of entertainment with people who have been doing stuff um 
in different areas for so long. Right, right. Okay, so throughout these conversations, what has been the funniest conversation that you've had on your podcast? Um, gosh, uh, well, I think it's just, for me, it, it, it's just like uh, being able to be on the moment. My most special moments, too, have been with, like, I got to be on Bob Saget's podcast the oh. last one he did. Like oh, wow. two days before he died. Like to me, it's like I am so lucky wow. to be able to share that moment with him mm -hmm. and to like uh, have been on his podcast. We laughed so much yeah. throughout that entire conversation. So I think um, that to me was really, really special. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Man, what a moment just to share and to experience. And, you know, throughout your career, you have been a staple in the Asian American community. And, you know, so much has changed over the years. And I think all aspects are trying to get better in representation. So question for you, do you feel that the representation is actually going at a, at a better speed, that is getting better, the opportunities are there. Yes, we're getting better, it's getting better. It's gradual, mm -hmm. and I think that there still needs to be more, mm -hmm. but certainly there's a lot more representation than there has been, which I mm -hmm. think is really um, something to be optimistic about. Yes. So it is, it is definitely more um, of a, a sense of like representation, mm -hmm. but there's still, uh, there still needs to be more. Right, yeah. And you've been staying quite busy on your latest projects, which is a documentary series on Showtime and a new film, Fire Island on Hulu. So which, um, out of these projects, why are they so important and near and dear to you to be um, involved in them? I just love being able to continue to work. You know, like mm -hmm. for me, it's just the, a ability to go out and doing like different kinds of things and going out and doing stand-up comedy, going out and doing movies and TV and all of that. Just like the dailiness of my work is really what I treasure. So mm -hmm. just a reason to get up and get out there. It's really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, getting out and seeing faces again and being able to interact with the audience. So we are so excited that you will be here for the next three days at the Summit City Comedy Club. So you all can catch Margaret there and you can purchase tickets to her comedy show on their website, which we will list below. Margaret, thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat with us. And we are so excited about you coming to Fort Wayne. Wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, guys, like I said, you can check out the three-day comedy show. Margaret will be doing five performances, so you can purchase your tickets at summitcitycomedy.com. Don't go anywhere. I'll see you after a short break.